got inside the booth, told you, might smoke with the friends, some of them I put on, but they just left, they said they was riding to the death, but where the f*** are they now, now that I need them, I don't see none of them, all I see is slip, are you fair with the friends, all I need is him? What's going on everybody and welcome to episode 7 of the Clean Bulk series. Uh, today I have a very specific topic that I want to talk about uh, and that's weak point training. Um, after doing my first show a couple months back, I was able to get lean enough, I was down to 167, 168 pounds, um, that I was really able to see uh, where my weak points were. Um, so today in this video what I want to cover is I want to cover three strategies to better manage your weak point training and uh, how I organized my training split uh, to accommodate this. So yeah, let's jump right into it. So the first strategy is to uh, increase the training frequency for that given weak point. Uh, so let's use the uh, back as an example. Uh, if it's specifically the lats uh, that you're trying to bring up and you're only currently training them once a week, um, then uh, what, something that you might want to do is just to increase that uh, frequency up to training them twice per week. Uh, and maybe even add in a couple uh, lat, uh, like a little more lat focused exercise to really try to uh, target the lats. Um, yeah, so I would say like for bigger muscle groups like your quads, your chest, and the back that I used in that example, um, you normally don't want to increase the past three times per week uh, of training it, just because they're bigger muscle groups and they take a lot more time to, uh, to recover and they might impact your ability to uh, progressively overload and your strength might take a hit. Um, so in order to build muscle, that's one of the uh, muscle hypertrophy uh, principles, I guess, is um, to progressively overload. Um, so yeah, you definitely don't want to do that. But for smaller muscle groups like your calves, your arms, your abs, um, you can get away with training them about five to six times uh, per week. Um, so yeah, if you wanted a good tip for that is if you wanted to bring up like your calves, for example, which is a smaller muscle group, you could uh, throw calf raises at the end of um, some of your workouts and that will increase the frequency and the volume of your calf training. Um, so yeah, you'll definitely see some results if you do that for the smaller muscle groups. Um, but for your back, for example, I would, uh, I would say definitely increase the uh, frequency of that training uh, in order to kind of give that muscle some new stimulus and uh, hopefully it will grow for you. The second strategy for bringing up your weak points uh, would be to prioritize that weak point in the in your training. So let's say for example, uh, if you were scheduled to go in and do uh, a back and bicep workout and you, uh, you deemed that your uh, weak point was your arms or your biceps, um, the good way to do that would be to start your workout off while you're fresh um, because normally when you start a workout, you're fresh and full of energy uh, and you're normally, uh, the pre-workout probably already hit and you're ready to, uh, to kill the workout. So what I would do is I'd go in and I would do my arm or my bicep training first in order to really hit them uh, optimally instead of tagging them at the end of their workout when you're more likely to, uh, to be tired or not fresh. And uh, it's much easier to talk yourself out, out of doing something uh, at the end of your workout, uh, especially after a heavy day like, uh, like back training. It's a lot of uh, different muscles that are involved with the back and if you have a full complete back program, you're trying to do arms at the end uh, or biceps at the end, it might not work in your favor. Um, so yeah, definitely you really want to prioritize that weak point and really go in and uh, hit that weak point first. So you do the biceps uh, before you do your back training. Um, one argument would be that you wouldn't, if you did your biceps before your back, uh, you wouldn't be able to lift as heavy um, with your back training because you pre-fatigue pre your biceps. Uh, the way that I look at that is if you're really trying to bring up your weak point, the whole idea of weak point training is to really target those weak points and bring them up. Um, so you wouldn't really be necessarily focused on um, maybe losing your strength for your back training. I would say that you should prioritize your biceps in that in that regard. Um, yeah, so just definitely go full tilt on that. I'm sure you'll definitely see some, uh, some uh, increases there. And the third and final strategy to uh, increase your weak point training or to improve your weak point training. Um, would be to uh, really improve that mind-muscle connection uh, with that weak point. I found that this is the biggest thing for me, uh, really feeling the muscle work. Uh, I know sometimes when you're lifting heavy with heavier weights, um, you're not necessarily focused on feeling the muscle, you're more focused on just moving the weight. Uh, so what I would recommend for this is, is if you're uh, to lighten the load for sure, like decrease the weight by a little bit, um, will allow you to be able to really isolate that. Uh, another thing is, so if you're, if you're using your back as an example, if you're doing your lats and you really uh, have a hard time feeling your lats, uh, you could do some pre-activation uh, exercises. Um, one of pre-activation exercises is basically just doing like a warm-up for that given uh, muscle group. So you could be doing some uh, single arm uh, pull-downs, lat pull-downs, 
where you're really trying to focus on getting the slow um, eccentric portion on the way up and really trying to squeeze at the bottom uh, portion of the rep. I find that that's a really good thing for the lats. Um, I had a problem kind of feeling my lats there for a little bit. Uh, so when I started throwing in some uh, single arm lat pull downs, um, I was really able to kind of feel more of where my lats were working and where I was feeling it. And I was able to adjust the exercise accordingly to uh, improve my mind muscle connection with that. Uh, yeah, so I'd say definitely lighten up the, uh, lighten up the weight uh, focus on unilateral. I uh, really feel that one side working. Uh, it will reduce the chances of other muscle groups um, taking over. Um, yeah, so I'd say that would probably be the one thing that I've found definitely uh, has, has improved with my uh, weak point training is just really trying to find that line muscle connection. All right, so now I'd like to move on how I'm going to be organizing my training. I'm actually going to be organizing my training using periodization, uh, specifically block periodization. I'm going to have a block that's going to be focused on uh, strength, and I'll have a block that's focused on hypertrophy. Uh, I'm also going to be using a deload week at the end. So basically at the start, what I did was I tested my one rep max, which I'll be using to, uh, to adjust, and towards my deload week there, I'll be retesting uh, towards the end of my periodization program, I'll be retesting my one rep max, just to make sure that my strength did go up. Uh, it's going to be focused on improving my strength on my compound lifts. Uh, they're going to be uh, my bench press, my squat, my deadlift, and my overhead press. Um, yeah, so basically what I want to do is I'm going to be uh, starting out with 78% uh, of my one rep max, which I have determined, uh, and then I'll be doing about six reps for those given compound uh, exercises. The only thing that I want to be varying uh, in the periodization is my volume and my intensity uh, of my training. So those are going to be the things I'm going to be adjusting week by week. Um, yeah, so if you want to uh, take a look at my chest uh, plan of how I plan to uh, periodize my chest, I'll take you through that. So as you can see, um, I started off my, uh, my chest training there with the uh, bench press. Uh, I always like to warm up, so I'll normally do the bar, like uh, basically 95 or 135, just to kind of get warmed up until I move into my working set. Um, I'll be doing three sets in my working set, and that will be uh, at 175 pounds, which is 78% of my one rep, uh, rep max. So yeah, I'll be doing three sets of that. Um, so that will be my main compound lift. That will be what I'm trying to uh, improve uh, week by week. Um, and then the next exercise um, that I'll be doing is an incline dumbbell press. Uh, for this, I feel like it's always really important to include a dumbbell pressing movement in your chest routine, um, just because it helps with a greater, it gets you a greater range of motion, which uh, more stress on, or more uh, stretch on your chest, also improves your stabilization muscles. Um, yes, and it also fixes uh, muscle imbalances that you might have in your pressing. Uh, sometimes I've been noticing that like when I'm pressing with the bench press, one arm is always going up uh, a lot quicker than the other, so I find that by doing the dumbbell variation of the incline, it maybe will help uh, try to eliminate some of that imbalance that I have. Um, but yeah, so that will be the next exercise that I do. I'm not uh, focused on doing a one rep or a percentage of my one rep max here. I'm kind of more just focused on... I will be tracking my weight and I will be uh, progressively overloading the movement. So I will be adding, uh, I'll be trying to increase the weight on it, but I'm not so much concerned about it uh, as a one rep max as opposed to my bench press um, because I'm more focused on increasing my bench and increasing my, uh, my compound lifts. But yeah, I will be tracking the weight. Uh, the next exercise that I'll be doing uh, is going to be a fly, uh, a chest fly. This variation uh, might change. I have a machine fly down here. Uh, which I did do. Um, I could do a cable fly. Um, I could do a dumbbell fly. Uh, the variation to me isn't isn't the most important thing. It's just about including that type of movement. Instead of being do instead of doing all pressing movements, I like to include uh, a fly just to kind of hit the chest at a different angle. And I like the stretch that it gets as well on the uh, on the fly movement. So I will be doing um, a fly here. Uh, it could stay the same or it could vary week to week. Um, but yeah, I really like the uh, machine fly just because you're kind of seated and you're able to get a nice uh, contraction on the chest and I really feel it. Um, but yeah, so I'll be doing that. Um, and like I'll be doing 12 or 10 to 12 reps for that. Uh, the rep range that I'll be working in for most of my exercises um, is a six to uh, six to 15 rep range. Um, I wouldn't go much lower uh, than six, I don't think. Um, and I don't think I'd go any higher than 15. Um, so I'll be working, like I said, in the six to uh, 15 rep range. Uh, but the last exercise that I'm going to be doing is dips. It's always good to include like a body weight uh, exercise in your programs. Uh, it kind of builds raw strength. Uh, the dip is a great exercise. Um, what you want to do here is you want to lean a little bit forward so it puts more emphasis on your chest uh, rather than your triceps. 
Um, I actually moved up. I used to have to do, do them assisted. Uh, and then I went to body weight dips. And once I got 10, I was actually able to uh, add weight. So I'm actually doing uh, weighted uh, dips now. I just kind of have a uh, weight belt on and I put a 10 pound, 10 pound plate uh, there and I do the weighted dips. But yeah, the dips I find uh, work your, every, every chest exercise works your, uh, your whole chest. Um, I know that people think that there's a difference between like your upper and your lower, but I mean the pecs are just divided into two different muscles. So uh, it depends on where you feel it. For the, for the lower portion uh, of my chest, I feel it with the dips. That's kind of why I do the dips. I'm able to get a good mind-muscle connection with the lower portion of my chest. Uh, plus, I like how it feels. I'm able to get, uh, like, like I said, a, a good stretch on my chest with the dips. So that will be the final exercise that I'll be including in my, uh, my chest program. Uh, the session set volume, um, that's going to be set at 12. I'll be hitting uh, chest twice a week. So I'll be, uh, if I do another 12 sets, I'll be doing both doing 20, 24 sets, um, which, which is good. I don't really want to go any higher than 30 um, sets of chest per week. So yeah, I'll kind of be sticking around the 24 to 28 maybe. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of, kind of how I'm going to be organizing my, uh, my chest training. So now I'd like to talk about my training split and the weak points that, I've, uh, that I'll be focusing on. Um, yeah, so basically what I'm doing is I'm running a modified version of a bro split. Um, as you can see there, I'm training, uh, I have an AM and a PM uh, workout. Uh, this is known as double split training. I basically training twice per day. Uh, one advantage of uh, training twice per day that I like is that you have two anabolic windows. Um, so macronutrient timing is a little bit more important for me. That's kind of why I, uh, I take my uh, post and pre uh, nutrition a little bit more seriously so that I have enough uh, energy after my workout to go back. And I also need uh, to make sure that I get the uh, enough energy to fuel my workout as well. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what my uh, training split is looking like right now. The one argument against uh, the traditional bro split is uh, by dividing your body parts into uh, each day, um, you're basically, they argue that you're not able to get enough volume. Um, but the way that I did it with my modified bro split, as you can see, I, uh, I'm hitting two different muscle groups uh, a day. So that allows me to uh, train everything twice per week. So that allows me to get the volume that I need, um, which is anywhere around, I try to get anywhere depending on the muscle group, but I like to get at least 20 to 25 sets per muscle group is kind of what I'm aiming for. Um, and I mean that could change as well. So like I said, it could go to 24, 28 sets. Um, but you notice there that I have a weak point training day. Uh, that's basically just a day that I'm able to take as a rest day or if I want to go in and work on some weak points, um, um, I could do that. Uh, the weak points that I'll be focusing on are uh, mainly smaller muscle groups. I want to bring up like uh, my calves, uh, my forearms, uh, my abs. Um, also, I'd like to uh, I, I've identified like my hamstrings as a weak point. I find that my quads are kind of more more dominant than my hamstrings. Um, so I also have I scheduled two uh, hamstring days in there already. So if I feel like I've, if I need to do any more volume, that will be the day to do it. Um, I would also like to mention that for abs, um, I'm actually going to be doing most of my workouts for abs at home. Um, I find that it's uh, easier. I don't like doing abs at the gym. Um, but yeah, the exercises that I'll be doing uh, for my ab training are just going to be your uh, there's going to be three that I'll be focusing on. Um, the first is a crunch. Uh, the second one would be a plank. Uh, and the third one would be just uh, a lying uh, kneel raise. So yeah, I'll take you through those. So the first exercise is, uh, is a crunch. Um, I like using this uh, piece of equipment here that I have. I don't know what you call it exactly. Um, but basically what it allows me to do, it allows me to take a lot of the strain um, off my lower back, uh, which I really like. Um, so yeah, I'll be doing three. I, I'm going to be doing three sets uh, of about 15 to 20 reps for this. Um, I really, really feel it. That's kind of why I like this machine because I'm able to kind of control the movement and really get a good squeeze at the uh, at the top and really kind of take it slow uh, on the way down. And I really, really feel my uh, my core contracting. Um, yeah, so that will be the first exercise that I'll be doing. So the second exercise is going to be a lying knee raise. Um, I'll be doing three sets as well for this. I'm also going to be doing around 10 to 12. Uh, reps. I find this one a little bit harder. Um, but yeah, so this is basically just a modified version of your uh, traditional hanging knee raise. Um, I really like this uh, exercise. Uh, the trick that you want to focus on here is not letting your feet touch the ground when you, uh, when you have a full extension of your legs. Um, and you really, really want to drive those knees up um, as far as they'll go um, to, to, your, to your stomach or to your chest on the way up. So yeah, this is, uh, this is a really great exercise, one that you can do at home, um, and I really, really feel it in my, uh, my lower midsection. Um, so I'm able to get a good squeeze, and uh, yeah, so that's going to be the uh, second exercise I'll be doing. 
So the final exercise I'll be doing is a, is a traditional plank. Um, I'll be doing three sets as well um, of about a minute uh, hold is where I'll be starting. Um, I might have to bump that up as I get uh, better at the movement or the exercise. Um, but yeah, what you want to focus on here uh, is just really squeezing and contracting your glutes and your hamstrings. Um, that will kind of tighten up your core and keep a lot of strain off your lower back. We find that you have uh, your lower back hurts during this movement. Um, but yeah, the number one thing that you want to do is you just really want to feel that contraction and really kind of hold tight and keep your core tight. Um, this is definitely an underrated exercise. It's uh, uh, a lot harder than it looks. Um, but yeah, and you also want to... Uh, you really want to make sure that you breathe. You don't want to hold your breath during this movement. <laughs> I'm kind of, uh, I kind of do that sometimes and I catch myself. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to breathe. Um, so this is another great uh, core movement that you're able to do at home. So those are the three movements I'll be doing uh, for my abs um, and they'll be at home so I don't have to uh, spend time in the gym uh, doing abs. All right, guys, that does it for episode seven. Hope everybody enjoyed the video and got something out of it. Uh, if you did like the video, give it a thumbs up below. Uh, and also, if you have any uh, feedback or anything that you would like to add, uh, leave it down in the comments below. I would like to hear from you. Uh, and also, subscribe to my channel. I have lots more uh, coming. Um, I have a video announcement that I'm going to be doing. Uh, once I finalize the details on that, I'll let you know. And uh, episode 8 is actually going to be dropping June 2nd, so look out for that. Alright guys, hope everyone had a great day, and uh, peace out.